colleagues and students. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, discussing the problem of sibling rivalry. And I'm going to show how Rabbi Jonathan Zacks deals with this problem. So here I go. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam belong to the same monotheistic family. <coughs> Their differences are frequently lived as sibling rivalries in the sense of the French polymath René Girard. Hostility and fear create an atmosphere in which one religion quickly becomes the enemy of another one. I argue that the dialogical exegesis of the religious sources of the Abrahamic religions, as undertaken by Rabbi Jonathan Zach, is helpful in making the three branches of the Abrahamic family less inimical and more united. In the course of history, the Abrahamic monotheistic family has been dysfunctional. <laughs> Much domestic violence is going on. The coherence of the family was endangered and disrupted in Christian supersessionism and in Islamic supremacy. Judaism identified Esau with Edom, Rome, Christianity, and vilified Jacob's twin brother. Later on, Ishmael, Isaac's brother, became the cold word for Islam. Although there were local exceptions, Christians and Muslims were looked upon as the enemy who unites us. Fracturing the unity of the Abrahamic family through an excessive love for one, for one's own family branch, came at the expense of other family branches. In a dichotomistic, dualistic thinking, one's own religion was perceived as the only true, whereas the other two religions were considered to be less true or even completely false. A remedy for such religious anomalies lies in a worldview that is non-divisive, interreligious and intercultural. No one is the sole object of God's love whose blessings concern all. The divine energy is present in all creatures. God gives food to all and is near to all who call upon him. The consciousness of God's inclusive love for all could lead to a more loving approach to others. The cultivation of such a consciousness cannot be the task of one family branch, since all the members of the Abrahamic family <coughs> are responsible for each other. Monotheistic religions exhibit a mimetic desire. In their desire to imitate religious others, they cause or fuel violent conflict. Violence is born in the desire to be what the other is. I want to show how Rabbi Zatz, in his fine analysis of sibling rivalries in Genesis, is indebted to Girard's mimetic theory. His book, Not in God's Name, is all about sibling rivalry. He confirms Girard's insights on scapegoat mechanism and on mimetic desire and uh, goes behind them in offering a dialogical, non-dualistic paradox. <laughs> Jonathan Zach's pleads for a self-critical guilt culture instead of a violent, dualistic shame culture. <coughs> he perceives a sibling a rivalry between Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Yet beneath the surface of Genesis, he uncovers a counter-narrative. Scarce goods like wealth and power are desired but God's love is, I quote, governed by the principle of plenitude. Through a creative, sometimes acrobatic exegesis, Jonathan Zach pleads for respect for the older children of Abraham. Coping with apparently difficult non-dialogical text, his interpretation avoids fundamentalism and creates a sense of unity between the Abrahamic religions. René Girard has greatly contributed to the understanding of the relationship between violence and religion. For him, 
Violence produces religion with its scapegoat mechanism as a way of controlling internal violence. Girard felt close to Freud's totem and taboo. Yet, in his view, the basic conflict is not between father and son, but between siblings. The mythic desire characterizes the relation between brothers. Girard argues that violence gives rise to religion, not vice versa. In their attempt to control and canalize violence, people shape and confirm their group identity by means of a scapegoat mechanism. A cycle of violence is ended, and group cohesion is guaranteed by killing a third party. Through the scapegoat, internal violence is deflected. First when sacrifice is a human being, then an animal. First when blames someone else, until the insight is born that the victim is innocent. Like Girard, Jonathan Zacks is concerned with violence, more specifically with religious violence. He agrees with Girard that religion is a way of reflecting violence by way of a sacrificial victim. Girard has famously drawn the attention to a mythic rivalry as the main source of violence. Mimesi stems from the desire to have what the other has. It creates scarcity, not vice versa. Girard analyzes how violence is contagious. It begets violence and creates a never-ending escalation as a vicious circle that cannot easily be broken. Sex accept, accepts Girard's theory on the sibling rivalries. He brings together belonging to a specific religious group and belonging to the larger world, characterized by a plurality of religions. His book, The Dignity of Difference of 2000, paved the way to not in God's name of 2015. The first book emphasized, as we heard, the differences that can be celebrated instead of being perceived as threatened. The second book goes a step further. Differences can be bridged in considering God's universal love. The specificities of groups are protected in boundaries, yet communication and universal love go beyond boundaries. In Not in God's Name, Zacks appreciates the Girard's theories on the scapegoat mechanism and on Mimesis as the origin of violence. In his exegesis, he analyzes the stories of competition and animosity between Cain and Abel, Ishmael and Isaac, Esau and Jacob, and between Yosef and his brothers. He focuses on the relationship between the religious, an exclusivist religious narrative based upon the Bible, when banishes the religious over and creates scapegoats. Yet, in, this, in his discussion with Girard's scapegoat dynamism and sibling rivalry, Jonathan Zacht avoids a dualistic thinking in which siblings are opposed to each other. In the story of Jacob and Esau, for instance, Jacob steals the birthright from Esau. However, in Zach's interpretation, Jacob becomes Israel at the Yabok River through an act of regret and his demand of forgiveness, which makes reconciliation with Esau possible. In a non-oppositional dialogical reading, Zach avoids hunting those black of civilization. He concludes that in dialogue and in solidarity we liberate ourselves from violently excluding or banning the other. In his non-dualist, non-violent exegesis, he prefers the weak ones who are not afraid of actively seeking justice. Zach recognizes that the, that the monotheistic religion has contributed to violence. He qualifies politicized religion as today's altruistic evil committed in the name of the lofty ideas. <coughs> violence in God's name is the paradigm of altruistic violence, and altruistic evil. He asserts that there exists an indirect connection between religions and violence. There is a problematic relationship between the monotheistic religions. Yet, <coughs> through a radical re-reading of the biblical narratives, that deal with sibling rivalry, Zach develops a much needed Jewish theology of the other. Following Girard, Zach argues that I quote, the primal act of violence is fratricide, not patricide. 
Sibling rivalry plays a central role in human conflict and it begins with mimetic desire, with the desire to have what our brother has or even be what our brother is. Sex analyzes a dualistic thinking in which one favors the old people and fears the other, creating external enemies to consolidate the group's cohesion. One blames others in a scapegoat thinking. Here again, we have Girard's influence. Violence is a group phenomenon, a, a group phenomenon generated because groups compete for resources and survive against other groups. They may develop a reciprocal altruism <coughs> and share food or act against uh, imminent dangers. They dualistically form a we against they. The Dead Sea Scrolls and the Library of Nahamadi are prime examples for such an egoistic altruism. Another form of dualism is that between the so-called Old Testament and the New Testament. The pathological dualism expresses itself in a regressive behavior. The world is divided in two, the good ones and the bad ones. So, what to do with the book of Genesis, where sibling rivalry is the dominant theme? That's a question. End of guess. At first sight, the Genesis stories on sibling rivalry seem to be a primal form of violence. Sex, however, perceives, and I quote, a more profound, multi-level, transformative text. In his exegesis, the Hebrew Bible tells a counter-narrative and testifies to a God who says, not in my name. In a multi-perspective reading, he takes seriously the own perspective as well as the perspective of others, which is essential in a dialogical theology that works with interconnectedness and multi-perspectivism. In his dialogical reading of the biblical stories, they already contain a counter-narrative. With his selective re reading of rabbinical com commentaries, Zacks concludes that permanent oppositions are problematic and that all are the seller Elohim. Zacks' thesis is that the narratives of Judaism, Christianity and Islam testify to sibling rivalry, which explains the violence in God's name. Sibling rivalry is imminently present in the book of Genesis, as testified by the stories of Cain and Abel, Isaac and Ishmael, Jacob and Esau, Rachel and Leah, Yosef and his brothers. It returns in Christianity, which is in its search for identity, developed a negative image of Jews. It also came back in Islam that respected Jews and Christians as people of the book, but ultimately wanted them to convert. Islam incorporated the two uh, Abrahamic religions in its own scheme of salvation. Jews too are not exempt, exempt from, sh from shaping their identity of the negative background of religious others. Sachs concludes that each of the three Abrahamic religions deem that they are the true here of Abraham. They feel threatened by each other and as a therapy puts the accent on the common humanity of all. I could uh, have uh, many things to say about shaming and blaming, which is not uh, working with dualism, and which is against um, Jonathan Zach's uh, concept of the guilt, in which one, uh, in an introspection, uh, asks oneself uh, what, is, uh, what, is, what has been done wrong, but I will skip that. I, um, I have a lot uh, to say about uh, how uh, Jonathan Zatz uh, treats the Isaac Ishmael story and also the Jacob Ezra story. I will not go into it. And we heard a lot about Joseph and his brother. I will not go into that. <laughs> So I come slowly to the conclusion. Because I think that uh, in a multi log it's much more important than my monologue. So we can uh, save that for the discussion. So I'm going to, um, to conclude.
developed the kind of interreligious theology in proposing a dialogical hermeneutics of a foundational relational text. He accepts Giraffe's mimetic theory, but definitely goes further. He agrees with Giraffe's realistic view on the usual behavior of siblings. But he also points the out of archaic fear as scapegoating as mechanism for overcoming fear. Refusing the friend enemy pattern, he is in favor of a we that contests the exclusivist we of populism. The theology of the other is an answer to the violent tendency of humankind and has universal <coughs> and sisterhood as its aim. The Abrahamic religions should leave out a possessive attitude and be in humble service of others. Violence could be mitigated by leaving out shaming and blaming and adopting a guilt culture that allows for repentance and reconciliation. The history of the members of the Abrahamic Abrahamic uh, family shows that they are tempted to have what the others have in sibling rivalry. They are violent in wanting to be the exclusively loved ones or the authentic believers. The aberration in this sad history may be corrected by Zach's dialogical thinking, which is characterized by sharing and caring rather than by violent mimetic desires. Thank you.